Hello everyone. So um, in the previous first part, we were discussing um, use of uh, static abstract or concrete factories and why this doesn't solve our problem of dependency creation inside of our components. And um, it's better not to use them inside view controllers, but they are actually useful in other contexts. So in my experience, um, I've seen that uh, many code bases resort to use of DI containers um, instead of uh, using the static factories or like which is the best option is the use of initializer injection. So I have the Swinject bundled with this project. So uh, let's try to use it. Uh, so it's actually um, a DI container that helps you register some of your dependencies and resolve them, or resolve all of them uh, in your components. So so the, how the API works is that we create a container that's defined inside the Swinject and container has a method to register the service. So in our case, it would be avatar image loader service. And we actually return a bundled avatar image loader. That's the instance that we want to pass to the profile view controller. And we would register the user loader, which uh, in which we would return the fake user loader. So however, we need the way somehow for the profile view controller to get those dependencies. So let's inject them via uh, initializer. And as you can see, uh, the compiler cannot infer the type of the container because it's defined inside Swinject and let's explicitly import it. Now we have a source code and modular dependency on Swinject as you can see. And um, then on line 64, let's resolve the avatar image loader, right? However, the resolve method returns us an optional, but like, I guess there's no point of using the profile view controller if the service is not there. So let's force and wrap it. And return us the user loader as so. And then uh, the only part like the one of the parts that breaks is the scene delegate because we need to pass in the container. But the other part is the um, initial view controller. Initial view controller. However, we don't have any access to the container here. And since we created an, a separate instance of the container, it should be exactly the same container. However, for the sake of making things simpler right now, let's create a new one as so. And let's uh, run the app and see what we have. So the screen works fine, like app works fine. But like if we try to log out and then go back to the profile, it actually crashes, right? Because um, the container is not container has nothing inside inject like registered into it because we are passing an, an empty container which doesn't have anything injected like registered to it. So since Initial view controller is created inside logout view controller, and logout cre view controller is created inside profile view controller, and profile view controller is created inside the initial view controller. Um, it's a bit complicated right now to um, fix this problem, and let's resort to using the um, shared container so that like it's like we can use we can actually create other containers, but let's use single one for the, for the entire app. So let's create a shared container and actually use it to um, to configure our dependencies. Okay. And then we don't have to pass a container to the view controller because now we would be accessing the shared one. Okay. And then let's run the app and see uh, the results. Yeah, everything works fine. Logging out works fine. And if we tap on show profile, it comes back to profile view controller because uh, we have a shared container right now to take care of all the required um, dependency management. But have you noticed anything similar to the factory? As you can see, we are still using like a static instance or like static method to um, get whatever we need. and. This is actually problematic because view, profile view controller is still deciding where, to, like from where to get all of the required dependencies. And this is not good because we still have extra dependency. And moreover, the part that's the most dangerous here is the use of 
uh, is the fact that this resolve method re can resolve any service type. So anything that you need. But like the problem is that we can resolve the stuff that's not required for our view controller or um, that might not be there, right? So let's try to do it actually. Logout service, right? We have a logout service that's defined uh, with the logout view controller and try to uh, use the container to resolve logout service for us. Okay, and force and wrap it. Do something with it, right? So if I run the app this time, it should crash because there's nothing in the container. This is actually a prime example of using DI container as a service locator because profile view controller decides from which container to like, let's say from which component to take its own dependencies. This is actually a service locator anti pattern. And because it, does, it knows from where to take all those dependencies and get, can get whatever dependency it needs or like even doesn't need, this is the prime example of uh, service locator into pattern. The most dangerous part is that we can resolve any type, even the type that we need, that we do not need or that might not be there. And um, the problem with service locator is that it actually gives you an access to unbounded set of volatile dependencies. By volatile dependency, I mean that the uh, serve that the components that might fail and deliver non-deterministic result as we have discussed in the control freak um, anti-pattern video. So we we already discussed what's the difference between volatile and stable dependencies. So since the uh, service locator gives you access to unbounded set of volatile dependencies and the profile view controller gets coupled with the concrete uh, container with the framework or with your own container that we've defined. It's pretty easy to write the code, uh, even not using the framework. So this is actually a huge, huge problem because first of all, it crashed because we forgot to set it in the scene delegate, right? So this is prime example of temporal coupling. Like you need to set things up front before creating the your dependency. The similar example that we've seen with the property injection, wherever forgetting to set the property would either make the uh, like produce to a bug that the code won't work, or if we force unwrap it, it produces a crash because we forgot to set it. So very, very, uh, very similar example in here. So. Um, the easiest solution here is to use con is to never use container from components like we are doing here. So instead of using container like that, we better just create an initializer for our um, uh, for our services. Right now, since we have an initializer and we have types defined statically, meaning we cannot even create the profile view controller without the dependencies, we can actually use them instead of um, depending on the uh, swingjack or like framework, we can safely remove it, right? Because we have no reference to any type inside of it. And the part that's broken is the scene delegate and initial view controller. So um, what we could do is to um, use the container to resolve dependencies for us. But as you can see, scope is very, very small, right? With our image loader self. And resolve user loader self as so. Yeah, as you can see, but we have no access um, to all of the dependencies in the initial view control. So, so let's comment it out for now. And as you can see, since we can actually in resolve all of the types in the scene delegate, the part of the code where we register the dependencies, do we actually need to use the DI container? It's just a personal choice. Sometimes they might be useful, but personally, I try to not use them in use simple initializer injection to um, take care of whatever I need. So like even forgetting to set this one would crush the app, but like the scope is relatively small and it's easy to spot that we've forgotten to set something up front. And remember that using DI container outside of the composition route, so like 
class scene delegate could be decide could be considered as a part of the composition root and using the container outside of the composition root, like we were using inside the profile view controller actually leads to a service locator anti-pattern service locator is still testable because you can use the container inject the um like register the service and resolve it in tests but it leads to slower tests because what if you you need two different types of user loaders, but since they are stored as a key inside a dictionary under the hood, you, you might have some sort of a test interdependency that uh, you might replace the same instance for two tests and one test wouldn't pass where while the other one would pass. So um, it would lead to flakiness, test slowness, and um, three major problems with using service locator is that um, it makes dependencies implicit instead of making them explicit. As you remember, we were just getting them, extracting them from the container and performing some methods. This is the first obvious reason. The second reason is that uh, we have un access to unbounded set of volatile dependencies. So meaning that we can resolve whatever service we have in our project, even if we don't need it, or even if it's not there, or it was not meant to be registered in the container. And the third one is that we actually drag, drag the service locator with ourselves, like the framework, like we were importing Swinject, right? So even if, even in the tests, you would need to import Swinject and your entire project would import Swinject everywhere. So it would become some sort of a virus uh, in your project. So it's better not to resort to using uh, service locator and try to centralize your dependency management uh, like it's shown here. So um, that would be it uh, on entire service locator. So we, so we've discussed um, like, so we shed some light on control freak anti-pattern and then transition slowly into using static factories if not using initializer injection. And we've seen that static factories or like concrete or abstract factories do not solve the problem because you have one extra dependency instead of instead. So if we had three, we, we have four right now to uh, get the job done. And the service locator is even more dangerous because um, there, it leads to temporal coupling. You need to set the dependency upfront. If you forget to set it, then it actually leads to a crash or the bug that the app uh, doesn't work. And it ha it gives you an access to unbounded set of volatile dependencies, meaning you can resolve whatever service you need. And the third one is that you actually couple to the framework. And this is not our code. E even if it was our code, it's better to have less dependencies in your components as much as possible. So um, that's it for uh, this video. And I hope it was useful knowledge for all of you. And thanks a lot for watching.